Hey everybody, this is Ted Drozdowski, Senior Editor for Premier Guitar, and we're here at the last day of the NAMM show, Sunday morning. It's very early today, so it's pretty chill down here right now. And we're hanging out with uh, Marshall Terry of Terry Audio from Texas, and he has a history in this business that has led him to develop the White Rabbit pedal and the CEQ. We're going to be visiting him and talking about those today. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. The coffee's hitting me, and that almond croissant's magic, man. Okay, cool. Well, why don't you tell us about the White Rabbit? Sure, of course. All right. So, um, I wanted to design, design something that both doubled as something you could use in the studio, as well as something that just always enhances like a variety of things that go through it. So, the heart of it is a little bit less of a instrument pedal or or a overdrive pedal, but the heart of it is actually a dual stage line amp pedal um, that just you know, uh, has a heritage of 1965, uh, you know, Ampex uh, tape circuits and everything kind of as the, as the general kind of guiding principle behind it. Uh, so it's a true bypass in and out uh, with the left foot switch. You could tell that that yellow light comes on. There's two modes. There's a blue mode and a two knob red boost. The blue mode is mostly unity gain so you could get tone and color from going through a discrete kind of studio circuit without like wasting your boost of your time. Uh, there's, so so yeah. it's essentially what you would, uh, in the old days, what you would achieve by plugging into literally an Ampeg unit. Yes, exactly. Or going straight DI into a console, very much like Beatles Revolution style. Mm -hmm. You get more of a console sound that you could also get through your speakers, you know. Also helps if you're touring and you're using like reissue amps and you can't bring your like favorite, uh, you know, classic amp on the road. It helps you mellow out that kind of extra kind of sharpness that, uh, you know, a new basic reissue amp could do that your classic one kind of doesn't, you know. Yeah, and it takes away the uncertainty of whatever might be there on the road if you're just using backline. Too. Yeah, all of the above, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Well, please continue. Sure, of course. So the blue mode is mostly unity gain. It has a very kind of cool uh, accident on tilt if you throw it all the way up to 10, and I'll show you that in a second. Then the two knob red boost uh, is a classic two knob boost. You could work the windshield wipers kind of counter to each other to get a very open sound or almost a, a tight, actual sagging type of sound that'll help take those uh, sharp dynamics away when you are doing a good, really healthy boost as well. Yeah. Right. Well, why don't you take us through a few of those sounds, and I'm going to keep the microphone right here, and you can tell us what you're doing before you do it, and we'll hear the results. Sound good? That sounds great. All right, man. Awesome. Fantastic. So um, let me play just a little bit um, with it completely bypassed, and then I'll switch into blue mode here. Blue mode set at one of its uh, kind of creamiest settings. Could of course back it off a little bit, but that's the best contrast um, that I could say. Also great for DI acoustic guitar too. If you tilt it all the way up just that last little bit. Start to get a nice little fuzz tone there. Yeah, that's a really nice meaniness. Fantastic. So then if you when you're ready for a boost, you could simply hit the right switch as more of an A B kind of switch. And now you get a this is the cleanest setting, but you still get a little boost in there. And so, you could work the knobs counterclockwise, as I showed you. Get a little more boost and a tighter compressed sound. Yeah, back it back down. And that articulation kind of comes back. Um, and of course, if you want to do wild things, you could, of course, do some really gnarly stuff. So you goes there if you wanted to, right? That's that's cool. Now you're obviously hand building these yourself. There's a really great uh, sort of uh, handmade uh, uh, paint pattern on it. Um, since you're assembling these, why don't you talk about that process a little bit? Maybe tell us what's under the hood if you're cool with that. Sure, of course. I actually have one under the hood. All uh, right. This is, this is a little voodoo that is sometimes hard to explain. Um, uh, you know, I made a, a circuit board for it, a classic PCB for it before this, and when I made the same exact circuit in the same exact ways, the extra little kind of holographic nuances simply weren't there. It changed it ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. Parasitic capacitances, something of the way that of going two-dimensional versus a three-dimensional layout. So when I decided to build it more like a 1965, Maestro fuzz tone, or a uh, you know original fox pedal would be, or really a punch turret board like a Fender Blackface. That extra quality came out, and so that's part of the tone and part of making it you know an original. The original White Rabbit is having it be this particular way with the 
punched board and the brass eyelets does something to the tone. Layout is as important as the circuit. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. And how much is this retailing for? It's retailing for two seventy five. Uh, I know it's a little higher for you know kind of most boutique pedals up there, kind of more with uh, Zachary Vex pedals, who I really adore. He's been doing great stuff for a long time. You know, I, I built it to last with Switchcraft in and out Alpha, the big Alpha pots like you'd find in an amplifier. You know, the best switches. So this is supposed to outlive all of us. <laughs> That's the point. All right. If we rock hard enough, apparently. <laughs> In addition to the White Rabbit, uh, Marshall's also got a CEQ here, a Creative EQ, and uh, well, I'll, I'll let you do it, man. Uh, to me, it's a white box with many dials, and it looks beautiful, but I think you can give us a more specific explanation than that. <laughs> sure, of course. Well, um, I, I'm Chief Tech for Shadow Hills Industries. It's a really fantastic company working with Peter Reardon, making this mastering compressor and uh, a lot of other things for pro audio, high-end pro audio, and something that uh, we don't do at Shadow Hills, of course, is a rabbit pedal, something that enhances that discrete line amp technology, but the heart of what I also really love to do is make this is like a six band classic really american style equalizer based off of western electric circuits uh, it's all passive with one active band inductor base fully discrete there's no chips inside it uses actually copper bus rails to get between all the different amplifiers um and so whereas we have like abbey road gear that's fantastic that's the that's the the British sound that's been done. Uh, I want to do something that was like the all tech bo boxes at Motown and everything else. And this is doing it heritage style, hand wound with my hands. Cool, <laughs> cool. And we've been joined by the Beatles for this too. So, uh, so we have a rare, uh, a rare cameo. Oh, totally. The, the, the punch and Ringo's kick on what goes on in Rubber Souls, uh, that's the way to hear it, you know? Cool. Well, let's hear it. Okay, great. I'll do it a bypass and then I'll kind of flip through a couple modes. And uh, to top it off, the six bands, I have four different uh, output amplifiers in it too. Think of almost like you'd have a pedal that has different transistors and different voltages and different sag. I build that into your final mix or master when you are creating your record. So. And, and did you hand build the output amplifiers? Yes, they're all hand built here. And all this is, you know, none of this is made in China. It's not warm audio. I, I make it here. I, with Four friends outside of Austin, Texas, where that's where we are. Cool. And uh, why don't you tell people where they can find out more about your products online? Totally. Well, of course, uh, check out Vintage King Audio. I think I'll have some distribution with them. But of course, go directly, terryaudio.com. And there's pictures inside of the EQ on my Instagram, Terry Audio on Instagram. So if you're curious, go there. Right. And what's the list on the uh, on the EQ, on the CEQ? The EQ is 3750, all hand-built, and I want to make it real reasonable for folks with the quality you're getting. So. Okay, well, thank you so much for being here. And uh, for a lot more... In the nudist gear. <sighs> One moment, please. <clears throat> In addition to checking out Terry Online, make sure you stay glued to PremierGuitar.com, where we're going to be showing you the latest, newest, and coolest gear at NAM 2018 here in Anaheim, California. Later.